Hola amigos! Welcome to... Teotihuacan! We came here to explore the site. We're going to show you all around as much as we can. And we're going to do a hot air balloon ride that you'll see as well. Yeah, so we're super excited to be here. We're going to walk around and explore and see what novelties we can find. Come and check out this ancient archaeological site with us. Hi, I'm Avi. And I'm V. Join us in our explorations of the central coast of California. And our adventures beyond. Well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> It's about 4.55 a.m. We're off to climb a pyramid! Woohoo! So come on with us. Hi. So I booked this tour ahead of time through the V8 app. It includes transportation and entrance to the archaeological site as well as the hot air balloon ride. The only downside really is that we have to get up at 4 in the morning to be in front of our hotel at 5 a.m. for the pickup time. Yeah, it's an hour-long ride all the way out there, and an hour-long ride back, and we would rather not deal with that ourselves, and so we decided to pay a little extra for that package. But that definitely does mean getting up oily. Yeah. It took us about an hour or so to get from Mexico City out to where the balloons launch by the city of Teotihuacan. Yeah, a bunch of different companies launch from the same spot and it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Yeah, you're all going to end up in the same location. Well, we're here. We slept a little in the car and we're going to check in. Definitely would recommend bringing a sweater though. It's chilly in the morning. Once you get up there and the fire is going behind you, it warms up, but hour or so waiting for the balloon to launch, standing around in the cold, I wish I had a sweater. And you can't take much in terms of weight onto the balloon. You couldn't take my backpack. Like girls can't even take their purses. Only what you can fit in your pockets or carry. Basically, yeah, what you're wearing and maybe a camera. Yeah, and before we knew it, all of a sudden it was our turn to hop into our basket. As the balloon started to lift off the ground, um, it was just really cool. It was this moment where we kind of like crested over the other balloons, and then as that happened, the sun just peeked over the mountaintops in the distance, and it was just spectacular. One of the really cool moments of the whole trip. It must be really cool to live in that town and see all of these beautiful colored balloons fly over your house. Yeah, it would be pretty cool actually to have that be something you got to see every morning. It smells very clean and pure up here. How you doing? It's <laughs> really awesome. This is super cool. <laughs> Just seeing them is awesome. Yeah, just all the balloons in the air. Yeah. It's colorful. Over the pyramids. And the sun's just rising. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I guess one of the reasons that they can kind of direct, because like, obviously they can't steer the balloons, you're at the mercy of the winds. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't realize at the time, but remember we kind of started off low and flew over the pyramids and then we went high and came back? Uh -huh. Well that's because winds shift directions at a higher altitude apparently. And so they launch from a site where they know the current's going to take them over the pyramid if they stay under a certain altitude, and then they fly up high and the reverse winds take them back. That's so crazy. Yeah. So they can't really steer them exactly, but they kind of can, you know, control the basic direction they go in that way. Yeah, and they can predict that yeah. like, on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. That's so cool. Exactly. From a meteorological standpoint, yeah. that's, that's pretty interesting. Exactly. Flying over the pyramid. One of those things that you have to experience for yourself, honestly. That was one of the oldest objects in the world I've ever seen. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. And to be able to fly above it, yeah. a once in a lifetime experience. It was so cool to be able to see it from that perspective. And there's something really magical about it being at sunrise. My scalp is heating up. <laughs> I can feel my scalp. We're going pretty high now. 9,000 is the highest altitude that is safe for us. And we actually have to stop at around 9.30 because of the turbulence of the wind. So how are you feeling? This is so peaceful and really pretty. calm. It's not yeah. scary at all. Yeah. It's really amazing though. Volare, whoa, cantare, whoa, nel blu, nel pinto di blu, felice pistari in la su. Well, we're heading back. It's already time to start heading back. This is really awesome. This was super awesome. This would be a cool thing to do for a living, huh? Right. We're making our final descent. Final descent can be tricky sometimes. I've seen videos where people end up in trees. Our descent was really gentle and peaceful and lucky mm -hmm. in that sense. We just touched down on the ground and they were, they were able to get us into a trailer very easily. Hola. And we were on our feet on the ground before we knew it. Yeah. I've seen some videos where they've actually landed directly on the trailer, so it's hit or miss. Um, sure. Ours was pretty dang close to being a direct on the trailer landing. Yeah, so props to our captain for yeah. navigating. Yeah, it was really cool. Right into this trailer. Wow. Gracias. Nuestro capitano. Gracias. Vamos, <laughs> El viento nos ha dado la bienvenida. El sol nos ha acariciado. El sol nos hará irritar. Salud, chicos. Salud. Salud a todos. Salud, salud. Un placer para compartir. Sí. Salud. Cheers. <laughs> We're on the ground! That was really awesome. I mean, I keep saying that, but it's just the word that keeps coming to my it's, mind. It, and it's actually apt, you know, yeah. a lot of Californians say, that was awesome! <laughs> but this was yeah, with awe. It really was. So. Like, flying over the pyramids was just spectacular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's, all, it's indescribable. Even yeah. you got to experience it for yourself. Definitely. So we're going to hop, I believe, onto a little truck and get Driven escorted back. back to our car. Here we are on the Avenue of the Dead in Teotihuacan. Why is it called the Avenue of the Dead? Well, when the Aztecs took over residence of this place, they assumed that all of the structures on either side of the street were tombs. But turns they were wrong. They were wrong. It turns out that they were actually familial yeah. residences. Yeah, they named it after what they thought were tombs, but right. So hence the Avenue of the Dead it has nothing to do with sacrifice or death <laughs> whatsoever. Functionally, it connected the Pyramid of the Sun to the Pyramid of the Moon behind us. Behind us. And it's over four kilometers long. Yes. Toro! Toro! No. <laughs> there's two ends of the Avenue of the Dead. There's one end with the big pyramids, and then there's another end where a lot of the residences were, and we didn't make it all the way down there. It's like a four kilometer walk between the two. There's multiple entrances of the site that you can drive between, but we just didn't have enough time. When you book these tours online, you can pick how long you spend at the site. And obviously it costs more because your private driver's waiting for you for more hours. But we would have definitely done more of a half day than just a few hours, because we did not have time to see both ends. 
So the origins of this place are shrouded in mystery. The anthropologists have some guesses as to who constructed this area. And it's equally a mystery as to why it was abandoned. Yeah, uh, they know it was inhabited at different periods by the Toltecs and by the Aztecs, but they don't know who built it for sure. Um, they know when the Aztecs found it, it was already in ruins, and then they kind of rebuilt it and inhabited it for hundreds of years before it fell. The Aztecs actually consider this the uh, center of the creation of the universe. So one of the first things that I'm kind of struck by is all the steps are in kind of uniform carved blocks, but the walls of the pyramids seem to be made out of just naturally formed rocks. I expected them all to be like, you know, block shape. Kind of like the pyramids in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, amazing craftsmanship that something like that can last so long. They knew how to do that so long ago. Yeah, and you can see now that there's not just the, st the stones inlaid, but they also they did intricate stonework here. So apparently these wide staircases here were the entrances to uh, plazas and squares in between the houses. Which we can't see. No, we can't go up there. Is that an eagle I hear? Or a hawk? Or... I always make that sound in right. adventure movies when they're on the lone prairie. No, one sec. I'm hearing a lot of strange, unidentifiable noises. It must be all the spirits that haunt this place. After realizing the source of all of those strange calls that we were yeah. overhearing. <laughs> It was these vendors selling instruments and noisemakers. And the instruments were crafted to sound like birds or jaguars. Yeah, they were little flutes that had like animal sounds. So I had to buy a couple mm -hmm. after, and tried them out. Mm -hmm. And he used some of them to make the song that we are playing during this video. Yeah, so some of those instruments are actually featured in the song you're listening to right now. Yeah. Okay, so we're here in front of... The Pyramid of the Sun. Pyramide del Sol. Si. Well, once again, we're still kind of ruining COVID's impact two plus years out because uh, that's the only reason we're not allowed to go up there. I was really looking forward to climbing it. Oh well. But we were in a hot air balloon just earlier today cruising right over that. And we were able to see there's a stone that's at the top of there that's supposed to bring good luck and you're supposed to put your thumb on that stone. Speaking of which, put your thumb on that like button <laughs> and hit like and subscribe and ding ding, get notified when we're on our next adventure by clicking the notification bell. Over 50% of you watching right now are not subscribed. Help us out so much if you could just take a second and do that for us. Thanks. It's as impressive in person as we saw in the pictures. Yeah, despite not being able to climb it, it's still amazing and still awesome to see. Yeah, so, you know, it'll just give us incentive to come back yet again uh, in the future and actually get a chance to climb it. One step at a time here. You can tell these people are a little bit small. <laughs> just from the... high for how narrow they are. Yeah, these very narrow steps. So much bigger. Any other one? Yeah. Yeah, the pyramid of, pyramid of the sun is massively bigger than the pyramid of the moon. From the sky, it didn't look that much bigger. No. But from the ground, it's, it's clearly obvious. Yeah. <laughs> a third larger. So, I would imagine, yeah. Right? That's, that's a good guess. Okay. One neat little factoid is that there are 366 steps that you have to climb to get up, representing the 366 days of their calendar year. So the stonework is similar to some of the other ones we've seen uh, in that there are small stones inlaid in the cement in between the big stones. Apparently this archaeological site dwarfs Pompeii. Really? In its, in its size, yeah. Really? Yeah, Pompeii is smaller than Teotihuacan. Interesting. Mm -hmm. 
mean, I have heard this was once the largest city in Mesoamerica, I think is what they would have called it. Okay. Yeah. There are more tourists here than I thought there were going to be. When we got here, it was much more empty, but it now seemed... that it's getting close to noon, yeah. it's filling up. It's hot. It actually wasn't all that hot when we were there, but there's just no shade. So you're gonna drink a lot of water and you're gonna do a lot of walking. So yeah, wear good shoes, wear sunscreen, bring water. And fortunately there are tiendas and stuff where you can buy water yeah. and food and snacks and clothes and some other stuff too. Mm -hmm. There might be water in here. I think, there, look, is, I think there is, I guess not. There are bathrooms and souvenir shops available as well. Ketz, Ketzal Papeloto. Papaloto. Ketzal Papaloto. One wonders exactly what all these different things were used for and what went on here. You know, was this a, an area where people cooked and cleaned or did other things, you know, uh, serviced food of some kind, or was this like a priest's antechamber where they put on their ceremonial stuff? Who knows? Who knows indeed. Yeah. Aside from spending more time at the site, in hindsight, the one other thing that I would have done differently is hire a guy. Yeah, it would have been nice to know in greater detail what had gone on in the different places we visited. There were signs throughout the site that provided a good amount of information, but a guide definitely would have been able to tell a much more thorough story. We chose not to spend the money at the time, but looking back on it, we wish we had spent the money. So, I'd recommend getting a guide. Wow, and this is all still painted too. All these intricately carved things are so gorgeous and they've stood the test of time. It's incredible. It really is amazing. All right, so that was Teotihuacan. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us and checking it out. This place is definitely an archaeological site worth coming to see. Yeah, you know, to be honest, I would recommend coming even if there were COVID restrictions in place. It's awesome, yeah, once again. Yeah, it really is. So thanks so much for hanging out with us in this video. And click a like, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to help out our channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I couldn't really think of a more picturesque place to be sacrificed. <laughs>